Human intelligence has perhaps been one of the most studied and controversial variables in all of psychology. From the first IQ test developed in 1905 to their use during World War I, testing has been with us for a long time. And although we've made great strides in understanding intellectual abilities and measuring them across different populations, perhaps one of the greatest discoveries of this past century is that intelligence has an identifiable structure. It is fascinating that much like the periodic table of chemical elements or the animal kingdom classification system, human cognitive abilities and academic abilities can be classified and mapped according to a taxonomy referred to CHC theory. This taxonomy forms the basis for modern test development and assessment practices used in the schools. So within this overall taxonomy, there's three layers, general intelligence over at the top, and then in the second layer, you have different cognitive processes which are referred to as broad abilities. These refer to things like working memory or visual processing. There are about 16 of them, and no single test measures all of them, and not all of them are relevant for the school setting. Finally, at this bottom layer, you have what are referred to as narrow abilities. There are approximately 80 of these, and these refer to different processes like deductive reasoning versus inductive reasoning. So a lot of my research has looked at sex differences in intelligence and achievement test scores within child and adolescent populations. And although there is no meaningful or consistent difference in general intelligence, there are some sex differences in some specific cognitive processes. Those consist of processing speed and visual processing. So for example, females show advantages in processing speed across age that persist all the way into adulthood. And processing speed is this capacity to perform simple cognitive tasks, typically within the span of a few minutes. Conversely, males show advantages in some visual processing tasks. And these consist of uh, using mental imagery to solve problems with visual information. So think of things like geometry, physics, or even the work of a dentist. Now, in terms of academic abilities, I'll refer to reading, writing, and mathematics test scores. But it is noteworthy that females tend to obtain better grades in all academic areas. Probably the most controversial area is in the area of mathematics. Male advantages in math problem solving at the average to above average ability range tend to be found most reliably. In terms of reading skills, the findings are sort of mixed. Females show advantages in reading fluency, but in other areas, it's inconsistent. But what we do know is if there is an advantage, it probably favors females. Now, the area that's probably received the least amount of public attention is in writing achievement. Females show advantages in writing achievement across age, across writing task performance, and that advantage grows as writing task complexity grows. In fact, females are at much higher advantage of uh, being high achievers in writing by at least two to one, whereas males are at much higher risk of writing failure. So, although th these findings are somewhat interesting, why does any of this really matter? Well, for one, understanding sex differences in specific abilities and why they persist, especially in the presence of mostly similarities, may help shed light on human cognition and educational progress. As one example, males are much less likely to complete higher education. And if we want to continue to improve educational and occupational success for society at large, we should continue to improve communication skills, especially written communication. Thank you.